Tons of credit to Hofstra. That was, I um, thought they played a heck of a game. Um, Speedy's a really good coach. That's a very, very talented team, dangerous. Um, they were better than us tonight. At the end of the day, they were better than us. Um, you know, they shot 56% in the second half. We call, you know, second half, we, t we say second half excellence, winning time is the last two wars, so the last eight minutes of the game. Couldn't get a stop. And then when we did, they got some huge, crucial second shots, what we call 50-50 balls, right? So it's it's not theirs, it's not ours. It's a loose ball, whether it's in the air or on the ground. And it, we didn't get them when we needed to. Um, had opportunities at the, at the free throw line, didn't convert. Just a lot of things that you have to do uh, to win tough conference games against really, really good teams we didn't do, and they did, and they did. Um, Aaron Estrada was sensational uh, in the first half. He had however many points, 23, and then in the second half, you know, I think he had four or something like that. But you know what? A bunch of other guys stepped up and, and really, really hurt us. Um, you know, people have asked – quite a bit over the last couple months as we've been on this long winning streak. Why is your team good? And one of the things I say all the time is that they're extremely consistent in their approach and their process. I look back on the last couple days, I and mean, obviously we had a long layoff since last week, but I look at you know our preparation. I thought the film sessions were the same, terrific. Guys leaning forward. I thought the energy at the shoot around was great. Practices were very, very competitive. Um, you know, we say all the time you got to earn you got to earn the right to, to 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 win, and I thought our guys did that in preparation. The execution of it, not not you know, it 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 wasn't uh, to our standard. But then you got to really credit Hofstra for that. I thought they did a really good job defensively, um, made huge shots, big time plays in a very 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 tough environment. So, you know, the same way that we built a winning streak and that consistency my expectation is um, our guys will use that same maturity toughness um, consistency to bounce back from a tough from a tough defeat my expectation is Monday will be an extraordinarily um, intense practice detail oriented film session will be great but you know what it always is we won't change and we'll turn the page to uh, another really, really good team, extremely dangerous, very talented Drexel team at Drexel uh, on Thursday. Did you think you got good looks as far as the three-point line was concerned? I mean, it just, just didn't seem like the ball was just falling for you tonight. Um, you got credit Hofstra for that. They did a pretty good job, really good job defensively. Uh, you know, with specifics like that, like the, the we we say we want to generate big advantage shots. I, I think some of it I, I got to study the tape and let you know some of those nuances, maybe things we could have done better. But the problem wasn't, in my opinion, the offensive end. Right, I mean, we scored 81 points. Um, you know, in the second half, our percentage was down. First half, we shot 48 percent, but um, we scored enough points to win. We didn't get stops and get crucial rebounds when we needed to. And like I said, do the little things like step up and convert at the free throw line. And uh, very, very, very few teams, you know, are 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 perfect. Who is it? Miami Dolphins of 1970, whatever it was, that went 16-0. and 0. John Wooden had some undefeated teams. Like there's very, very few teams that don't lose. Um, it's a setback and it's some adversity. And I'm, I'm to be honest with you, I'm, I'm excited to see how our guys respond. With that being said, I obviously you want to win every game, but is it a little, little more uh, calm your mind a little bit that you're not going to head to Washington in a month undefeated, like, you know, with all the pressure in the world on these guys to just continue this win streak sort of thing? No, I want to win every game, you know. I, but you know what? Speedy does too, and every coach around the country wants to win every single time. Uh, I say all the time, even during the winning streak, you guys would ask me, I go, man, winning Division One games is hard. They all have scholarships. Their coach has gone through decades to get where he's at. They prepare well. Um, you know, is it – is it? you mentioned like a monkey being off your back. I, 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 I don't know. Um, I didn't sense that our guys have felt pressed or felt pressure. Um, we work really hard, but we have fun too. Like those guys, uh, we try to make them laugh every day. We ha you know, like those guys haven't seen like they've been pressing. So it wasn't like we got tight 
Hofstra was good tonight. They were really, really good. They deserved to win, and we didn't. And there's some things we got to fix. Uh, we're not a perfect team, but nobody is. And, um, you know, it'll, it'll be a couple really good days of practice. And like I said, we've got a tough one again on Thursday. Coach, it's been a while since you guys, since you walked into the locker room after a loss. So can you kind of describe the mood amongst your players? And then what was your message to them as you guys, you know, continue on throughout this season? They were disappointed, obviously. Um, you know, you have a just a electric atmosphere tonight. The marketing staff worked their tails off um, to, to put some really cool stuff together, T-shirts, all that stuff. The crowd was awesome, right? The city's buzzing, and it's still buzzing about this team and, and, and what we're doing and those type things. Um, so obviously, you know, they're disappointed. You feel like, you know, you, you let people down and things like that. But, um, you, you know, I, I, I didn't get upset. I didn't raise my voice. I was, I was, I was very direct with those guys and said, um, you can't – what I told you guys, you can't win big-time conference games against really, really good teams and give up 56% from the floor in the second half when it matters the most. At the end of the day, that's the deal. Um, you know, you could you could sulk, you can cry, you can pout, all that stuff. But you look in the mirror and go, we have to be better getting stops and rebounds and doing those winning things late in the game, making free throw, all those type things. Um, but we'll all look in the mirror. I think that's what really good teams and good coaches do. What 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 could the staff have done different? What have I could have done different? Skip Prosser used to say all the time, never accept in victory what you wouldn't accept in defeat. So one of the mantras of our staff is even in that winning streak, we would lose, we would win a game and we would break down the tape and prepare like we lost that game because we're not, we're not going to bend because we're on a winning streak. It's a, and we'll do the same stinking thing in this one. Uh, does that guarantee the next re result is going to be what it is? No, but we're going to be elite in the process. That's what I've been telling you all along, and we'll continue to do that. Fully shut this off and watch the Bengals tomorrow, or will you stew over this all day and let it um, get to you? So I have some really special people in my life in town um, right now. First, my parents, and then just some people that are, that have just poured into me uh, from Rock Hill. It was a great time in our life, and people that just poured into my children. And um, I'm gonna go out to eat with them because I love them, and they've poured into me and helped me to where I am today. You know, when you lose a game, you walk into the grocery store and you don't want to look people in the eye. But you know what? I'm going to go have, 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 have a meal with those people and tell them I love them. Um, won't sleep much tonight. I'll watch the tape. Uh, I'll get up really early because I always do and, and, and watch tape and, and all that stuff. But you know what? At 6.30, I'm watching the Bengals with my son. And I'm going to have a jersey on and I'm going to be cheering like crazy because it goes like that, man. Kenny Chesney says, don't blink. Like, you know, John, Johnny and I are going to sit there and we'll watch the game. I hate that we lost, and I want to throw up. I want to vomit. I'm going to go to eat with the people that I love tonight. I'm going to watch hours and hours of tape, and I'm going to day my butt off, 630. Amen. <laughs> About 40 seconds left, you just had enough to tell. Were you just hoping to play him for possession? And yeah, you know, the, it, we, we, we were going to, and then it got late in the possession. Right, there was 13 seconds left in, in the possession. It's like, you know, so we decided not to and get a stop, which we did, which gave us an opportunity to get a couple, couple possessions, and we just didn't convert. You know. One final question. What Bengals jersey do you wear? Yeah, I, I have an Andy Dalton one. The Andy Dalton, the red rifle. But my son's got like Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow, but that's the only one I got. So I'll, I'll wear. I don't have one of those. I know. <laughs>